The ability to scale applications horizontally is one of the most important features of Kubernetes. Nevertheless, Horizontal Pod Autoscaler, or HPA, is very, very basic. It allows us to scale applications based on memory and CPU consumption. But that is not enough. We need more. Now, to be honest, HPA can be combined with custom metrics API, which never lived up to the promise. We need a solution that will allow us to scale Kubernetes resources based on data from almost anywhere. Memory and CPU? Easy. Metrics from Prometheus? Why not? Metrics from any other stores like Elastic, Datadog? Yes, please, please, I need that. How about messages from Kafka, logs from AWS CloudWatch, data from MongoDB? I want it all. I want to be able to scale my applications or other Kubernetes resources based on whichever data I deem is important for scaling. It should be up to me to decide what the source of information is and tell the system how to scale. And while we're at it, scaling should not be limited to the few commonly used resources like deployment and stateful set. Scaling should be available for any Kubernetes resource, built in or provided as a CRD. Just as it should be up to me to define the source of data used to define when something should scale, it should be up to me to decide what should be scaled. Now, the question is, can we have all that? Can we have horizontal scaling without any limits? KEDA might be one of the solutions, or maybe the solution, to all those issues and a few others. It is a tool that allows us to easily scale any Kubernetes resource, and it is short for Kubernetes Event-Driven Autoscaling. So let's check it out. Let's see KEDA in action and see whether it can solve our scaling problems or needs. Now let me open a silly application, a silly demo application and double check first whether it works. And there we go. This is DevOps Toolkit series, my silly, silly website. You can see that it runs. There is nothing special about it. And to prove that there is nothing special about it, I'm going to retrieve all the pods with kubectl, the namespace is production, get pods, and you can see that there is only one pod of that application. It is not scaling, or at least it is not visibly scaling. And you need to trust me, there is no horizontal pod auto scaler or any other scaler for this application. It is a single replica application for now. And we are going to change that with KEDA but before we do, let me tell you briefly, there is a gist with all the commands and the link to the gist is in the description. So go and check it out if you want to reproduce what I'm doing. So let me output a simple definition of a scaled object. That's what we get with KEDA. So cut KEDA prom.yaml and we can see a straightforward, relatively simple definition that will help us scale the application I just showed and it is scaled object that's the kind that's what we get when we install CADA itself and it has a couple of important sections in the specification first is the scale target reference that's a reference to a kubernetes resource that should be scaled and that can be literally any resource actually almost any resource it can be any resource that is baked into kubernetes or any resource that has scale sub resource defined and that should be available in most custom resource definitions, at least if they're done well. So theoretically, scale target reference can be anything. Then we have some housekeeping things like pooling interval, which in my case is set to five seconds. By default, it's 30. Cooldown period, how much time to wait before it scales down. In my case, it's 30 seconds. It could be 300 seconds. Or actually, that's a default value. What is the minimum number of replicas? What is the maximum number of replicas? It can scale to zero, but don't do that with only KEDA. 
you would need something that would queue your requests, like Knative or something like that. Uh, anyways, you can scale to zero and whether your application can handle no replicas, that's, that's a separate question, separate video. And finally, we have triggers. In this case, I'm using Prometheus. There can be many, many other triggers. I'm going to show you the list later. And then in the metadata section, I'm saying, hey, the server where you should go to fetch metrics is Prometheus server dot monitoring. That's the namespace. This is the name of a metric. It can be anything you want. Threshold that if it's passed, the scaling should happen, should occur. And finally, the most important part is a query. And in this case, I'm saying, hey, I want to calculate the maximum rate of traffic service requests total, the total number of requests from traffic because I'm using traffic today. And by the way, if you're following up, you should use traffic as well. Anyways, that's all Prometheus querying. You should know that if you don't, then there are other videos for that. Anyways, this will calculate the maximum number of requests based on a rate for a certain uh, metric, which is coming from traffic and the output is limited to a specific service, which is my own application. Now the query will differ depending on what are you using as a source of information. As I said before, this is uh, Prometheus. And if you use something else like Datadog or whatever else you might be using, then the query will be obviously different. It will be whatever the source of information accepts as a query. And now all that's left is to apply this definition with kubectl, the namespace is production. I want to apply whatever is defined in the file keda prom yaml. And that's about it. A new resource was created and now I can relax. I can just go home or do something else. I mean, I'm already at home. I can go and fetch coffee, for example. But that would be silly because this application is not running in production, so it is not getting real traffic. And that means that I need to simulate some traffic so that we see scaling in action. And for that, I will use K6. K6 is awesome if you're doing performance testing or load testing. I have a video about that somewhere over there. Go and check it out. And uh, while doing that, while you're checking it out, I'm going to run a certain number of uh, requests in parallel for a specific period of time and generate like that uh, traffic, right? So I'm doing load testing to generate traffic, not really to test. And uh, it's going, right? It's running. And then now actually I can go and fetch coffee. But before I do that, let me see whether there is anything waiting for me in Slack, whether there is any message over there. And look at that. I got a new message in Slack saying uh, the deployment called DevOps Toolkit was updated. The number of replicas changed from one to three. So I do not really need to monitor my cluster to see whether scaling really happened or no. I'm getting notifications on Slack and I'm getting them through Robusta. And if you don't know what Robusta is, there's a video for that as well. Check it out. And I strongly recommend to do that for two reasons. First, because Robusta is awesome if you need uh, notifications of any kind and if you need to troubleshoot stuff and so on and so forth. Anyway, I will not go into details. Check it out. The link is in the description. And the second reason I'm mentioning Robusta is because Robusta is sponsoring this video. So you should check them out. That way you're helping this channel, right? They sponsor, they give money for the channel so that you don't have to and uh, everybody's happy. So check them out. Check out Robusta. It's really awesome solution. Otherwise, I would not let them sponsor this channel. Thanks to Robusta for sponsoring. And now let's go back to scaling because we can see from this Slack message that the number of replicas increased to three. Let's see what's going on. What happened? Now let's see what's really going on by executing kubectl, the namespace is production, and I want to retrieve pods of my application. I want to retrieve all horizontal pod autoscalers, even though I did not define any, and I want to retrieve all scaled objects. That's SCADA, that's what I applied a moment ago, I mean, a few minutes ago. And we can see that indeed there are three pods, I mean, of course there are three pods, Robusta told me about it, and there is horizontal pod autoscaler, this horizontal pod autoscaler created by CADA, by the scaled object that I created a few minutes ago. So scaled object, created HPA, we, then it is manipulating HPA, it is changing HPA, and HPA created the pods of my application. Now let's spice it up a bit. Let's create more traffic, more traffic than before. Let's uh, put the system to the test by executing, by showing you first another K6 manifest. And this one, I'm creating 200 concurrent users over 30 seconds. 
again check uh, kate six as well uh, they're not sponsored they should be though anyways uh let's see what will happen if i put even more pressure on my application so k6 run k6-100 js and then it runs for 30 seconds and while it's running this might be a great opportunity for you to stop what you're doing i mean continue what you're doing continue watching the video but subscribe to the channel like the video and if you want to sponsor the channel yourself as an individual please consider joining the channel that helps pay the bills so uh, do all the stuff that you do on youtube and while i was talking about and trying to convince you to do the stuff uh k6 finished executing and now I can take a look at what's happening and I will first go to Slack to see whether I got a new notification. So let's go over there and see whether my application scaled even more. And there we go. I got a new notification saying, hey, your application now scaled from three replicas to six replicas. You have more traffic than expected. So application should grow with the traffic, right? And if you list all the pods and HPAs and scaled objects, we can see the same story as before. Uh, we have six pods this time, horizontal pod auto scaler already configured, uh, currently with six replicas and scaled object that is the one that uh, manages uh, controls horizontal pod auto scaler. And now I'm going to fast forward a couple of minutes. I want to see what happens when the traffic goes down. What happens with the application? I mean, you can probably guess. So this is me fast forwarding a couple of minutes. Zap! There we go. And now we can see a new Slack message saying, hey, your application now scaled from six replicas to four. And I can observe that from the terminal as well. If I list all the pods and HPAs and scaled objects, now we can see that there are four pods instead of six that were there before. So it's scaled down because there is less traffic than there was before. And then if I fast forward a bit more and I go back to my terminal, I can see that now there is only one replica because that's the minimum number of replicas. There is no traffic going to that application anymore. So Keta went back to the minimum number of replicas. Absolutely awesome. Now you might be wondering, hey, how did I know what to define in Keta? How did I know that I can use Prometheus as a source of my metrics? And by the way, Prometheus is boring. Everybody's using it. And you can actually scale your application with Prometheus without Keta. But what makes Keda amazing is the number of supported scalers. So I'm going the easy route with Prometheus, but let's take a look at what other scalers we can use to fuel my applications, to fuel our applications, to scale them. And look at that. The currently available scalers for Keda are ActiveMQ, a couple of them, Apache Kafka, CloudWatch, AWS DynamoDB, AWS Kinesis Stream, AWS SQS, and Azure something something. There are a couple of Azure uh, supported scalers, and Cassandra, and CPU, and Cron, and Datadog, Elasticsearch, and External, and External Push. And a couple of supported in Google, and Graphite, and Huawei, and IBM MQ, and InfluxDB, and Kubernetes Reload, and Liglus Topic. What is that Liglus Topic? I have no idea. And there is uh, memory based scaling, and Metrics API, and MongoDB, and MetaSQL, and MySQL, and NUTS, and New Relic, and OpenStack Metrics, and OpenShift Swift, PostgreSQL, SQL, Predict PredictCube. I have no idea what is PredictCube. I should check it out. Prometheus, RabbitMQ, Redis couple of releases actually. Selenium Grid Scaler and uh, Solace. I do not know that one. I need to check it out as well. Oh, that's quite some list and the list is growing. We can expect even more. So you can use almost anything to fuel scaling. You can use almost anything to decide what information is needed to deduce when an application should scale. Actually not an application, when something should scale. Doesn't even have to be an application. And the reason why I'm saying it doesn't have to be even an application is because Keda works with any resource type. It can be anything in Kubernetes, including custom resources, as long as the scale sub-resource is defined. If you don't know what scale is, a sub-resource scale actually is, then tough luck. I'm not going to explain this here. I can make another video. Until then, Google it, scale sub-resource, and you will find it out. And Keda is becoming huge. It's becoming adopted by ever-growing projects, not only on the metrics side, but also among different projects that are using Keda to scale themselves. Azure itself is already employing Keda in a couple of situations like uh, Azure Container Apps. Knative is looking into adopting Keda as well. So check it out. There is a project, separate project within Knative Sandbox about adopting Keda and you will find quite a few other projects that are already using it or are planning to use it. Now let's talk about pros and cons of using Keda. Now the pros of using Keda are relatively simple and straightforward to explain. There are only two of them. It works with almost any resource type. Anything you have in Kubernetes, 
can be scaled with CADA as long as scale sub resource is defined, and it should be. And the second uh, advantage of CADA is that it works with almost anything as source of metrics. Whatever you have can, or almost anything you have, can be used to fuel scaling, to make decision uh, when to scale and how to scale. Now, as for cons, as for negative sides, well, there isn't any. I cannot think of anything bad to say about it. It's one of those things where I could not find anything negative, at least not when compared with alternative solutions. All in all, if you need to scale your applications or resources or something, if you need to scale something based on more than memory in CPU, something more elaborated than memory in CPU, which by the way is almost never enough, then KEDA might be the solution for you. And let me know in the comments, what are you using to scale your applications and the rest of Kubernetes resources? Let me know in the comments, please.